How do you get your footage to go from this to this? And this is what you get in the box of the Osmo Marble 2. So you get this case. It's... I don't quite know what material it is. It's kind of a polystyrene kind of material. That is literally all you get. You get yourself a micro USB cable. And you get the Osmo Marble 2 as well. So we've got this button on the left hand side here with W and T. This allows you to zoom in and out. We have got the power button as well, which is the button that you need to use to be able to actually use the device. You've got the record button, which allows you to take photographs and begin filming using this. We have this little doll here as well, which allows you to move the phone. So once it's in here, you can actually use this dial to actually move the phone around but you get a bit of information on the side there and we've got a couple of screws on the back here this back one here is to extend the arm so it depends on what phone you've got if you've got a larger phone you will have this sticking out if you unscrew it you can have it sticking out quite far or you can move it in it all depends on what mobile phone that you are using and you've got another screw on the back here as well we can unscrew that allows you to move the position of this that your phone sits in screw that back up again and that is locked in place now you've got the micro usb on the side as well which allows you to charge the device on the back of the device as well you have a usb port so you can charge up your mobile phone using this so you can use the battery from the osmo mobile 2 to charge your mobile phone plug usb in there the other end into your mobile phone and away you go and on the bottom as well we have this part which allows us to mount it onto a tripod as well which is also very very useful and the best way i've found to set this gimbal up is to make sure that this is in an upright position so rather than having it sticking out horizontally make sure it's upright get your mobile phone you have to open these sides here so if i open one just slide it down and you have to make sure that the bottom of your phone connects to this rubber piece at the bottom as well. Now the mobile phone's in place, if we hold down the power button, you should see the LED lights come on. Now we should try and put itself in position, but what we'll do is we'll move it to the side. Now that looks fairly balanced. If your phone isn't balanced and it's toppling to one side, you will need to adjust the back screw. So not this one on top, there is another screw that's on the side there which allows this arm to come in and out so you may need to adjust that just to get the balancing right for your mobile phone we can double tap the end button which should put it straight so if i do that there it is the gimbal's in place if your phone isn't correctly balanced that will start toppling all over the place that is something you do need to sort out first is the balancing and what we can do from here is you've got the joystick which allows you to move the phone left right up down you have the record button there you'll be able to configure this button so you can have it take videos or pictures if we load up the dji go software on the mobile phone so that just wants to connect to the device because i haven't paired it with the bluetooth yet so if we put ready it's having a quick search there's the device if we press connect on that and that is it now so there is a tutorial on there that you can watch Ain't nobody got time for that. We'll just quickly exit that. So we get a few options on the phone now. We've got the camera or the video. So depending on which one we select, if we tap the record button now, that is beginning to record a video. And you get a little red LED as well to say this is actually recording. Tap the record button again. It goes back to the main screen. If we go to the camera, same principle really. Tap the button, takes a photograph. The other options we've got as well, we've got single, panoramic and long exposure. So you've got a few settings you can play when removing this software. The folder with the arrows on there, that rotates the picture around. So as you can see, there's the camera, there's me. Let's flick back. The play button at the bottom lets you look in your library. So there's the video and the photo that we've just took using the gimbal. This icon down here, that allows you to set the brightness. So if you tap anywhere on the screen, that allows you to turn the brightness up and turn the brightness down on the, on the image. If we tap the little crosshair again here, you get a little green box. This is where you can do your motion tracking. So you'll select a target, draw a square around it, 
and the mobile phone will do its best to track where you're going. This is really, really useful, especially if you're vlogging. The only issue I've had with it really is if you make too many sudden movements, so you, for example, start running from one side to the other, it does its best to track, but it may lose the tracking. But as soon as you come back into frame again, it does actually pick you back up, so it's really good. We got the home button at the top there, which sends you back to the main page. You've got the camera button, where you can change the video resolution. So at the moment we're on 720p, you can do 1080 or 4K, depending on your phone really. You've got a beautify mode which you can enable, but you can only do that on 720p, so you can't use the beautify mode on 1080 or 4K. You can do normal, brighten or darken the image. You can correct the white balance, you can enable the flash, you can put grids on the phone as well just to help you when you're shooting. We have got a scene mode which basically we've got walking and sport so depending on what we're doing we select either one of those. We've got pitch lock, I'm not quite sure what pitch lock does but we've got it anyway and we have settings at the bottom. Now this is really really useful so if we go straight to gimbal we have got some calibration settings there as well so if you have issues with the gimbal not working this is where you need to come to actually recalibrate the gimbal we've got configuration settings where we can do slow medium or fast we've got some joystick settings pan reverse tilt reverse we can reset the gimbal from this menu as well under the camera settings we can change the location that it saves the files we've got some zoom sensitivity on there reset the camera and we can save unstitched pano photos as well so under general we've got our device names we can reset the fresh guides and we've got an about as well and we've got a live stream option as well where we can live stream to facebook youtube weibo or you can put a custom url in there as well so what we've got on the osmo mobile 2 is we've got the button that's got the letter m on there if we tap that once that will lock the position of the mobile 2 in place so if i give you a quick example now so if i pan across this field so at the moment that is not locked in place so as i pan from left to right as you can see the osmar mobile 2 follows wherever i go but if we come back to the starting position now if i tap the m button once that should lock the osmo in place so we've tapped it once now so when I move this around, as you can see, the mobile phone stays in place. It kind of locks dead center. So if I go up and if I come down as well, it does its very best to keep everything in position. So if I tap the end button again, so it gets rid of the lock feature. As you can see, we are moving from left to right again. Another thing to show you as well is we've got this button here so this allows us to pan so if i hold the osmo in place now if i begin to pan from left to right so if i hold the right button down as you can see we are moving if i can get this into shot as well so we are panning left and right so we don't even need to move our hands for this if we push up we can look up push down that tilts everything downwards as well so what I'll do now is I'll do a couple of videos of me walking to begin with. We'll just walk down there and come back with using the Osmo Marble 2. And then we'll do another one where I'm actually holding the camera in my hand. This is me walking down the street. I've got my phone in my hand, so I'm not using the gimbal for this test. And uh, this is the kind of quality you can kind of expect if you're walking down the street holding the mobile phone in your hand. And we're doing the same test again. This is using the gimbal now. It might pick up a lot of wind noise, so if you do, I'm very sorry about that. So hopefully this is looking a lot more steady rather than having it in my hands. A lot of people have reported that the gimbal makes a noise if it does, chances are this is not screwed tight enough. So if I give you a quick example. That
that noise is due to that screw in the back. So if I begin to screw that back down, I mean, I've gone a little bit over the top with it there. I've unscrewed it quite a long way. So we've just retightened this back screw now. And if we fire the gimbal back up, as you can hear, there's no noise there as well. So if your gimbal is making a noise, just make sure you check that back screw. It might be slightly loose. So we might just need retightening. The Osmo Mobile 2 weighs 485 grams, so it's not a heavy piece of equipment to use. It's now got itself a 15 hour battery life, but that is in ideal conditions, so I wouldn't expect to get the full 15 hours out of a full charge, but you do get a prolonged period. There is something you need to bear in mind when using the USB port on the back of the gimbal. You cannot charge your mobile phone while you are using the gimbal, so you will need to take the mobile phone off the stand and actually charge it without using the gimbal. This is due to the mobile foam having to be pushed right against the rubber piece at the bottom of the gimbal. Most charging ports are at the bottom of the mobile phone, so you cannot charge this phone while you're using the gimbal. You can try and turn the mobile phone around the other way, but the issue with that is that your camera is going to pick up the arm of the gimbal, so it's pretty much useless. So the idea of having the USB port on the back of the gimbal is really useful, it's just not implemented correctly. Sometimes it's a little bit of a faff to actually get the gimbal to pick up the mobile phone. You'll put your mobile phone inside the gimbal, double tap the button for it to align itself up and nothing will happen. I found I've ended up having to turn the device off and turn it back on and then Nine times out of ten, that will resolve that issue. But overall, I do actually really like the device. If you're somebody who does vlogging, I would definitely recommend getting something like this. It doesn't necessarily have to be a gimbal. There are a lot of other manufacturers out there now who are creating similar products. But I think it's one of those, really. Once you've actually used one of these, you'll think, how have I kind of survived without using one of these in the past? And my star rating on the Osmo Mobile 2 will be 7 stars out of 10.